Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Big updates today as Mercedes confirmed that a new deal with Lewis Hamilton is just days away at this point and also updates from the FIA as to the qualifying format for next year. Arguably an interesting change at the very least. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Red Bull are going to reveal their car the earliest so far of any team that has been announced so far. Because they're revealing it so early, don't expect them to actually reveal anything realistically. It's probably going to be the RB18 with the new livery, which is going to look the same as the old livery, but they'll talk about the car. You know how it goes. But it's February the 3rd for Red Bull, so this is three days earlier than the season launched for Williams, and um, over a week earlier than Alfa Tauri that I believe were on the 11th. That's the first kind of car launch. Red Bull say season launch, which probably means they'll show the livery, but they won't necessarily reveal what the actual car is going to look like, the RB19 or whatever it is this year. So it's probably going to look just like this, which is what we expect it to look like. Not a bad livery, but, you know, don't expect anything special I would imagine here. If they do something cool like this, I'd love to see it, but it's somewhat doubtful as it stands, especially after the success they had last time. Speaking of liveries, big update from Gulf Oil International who have been involved for decades in motorsport in one form or another. We remember a few years ago the McLaren Gulf Oil livery, which was all rather nice and apparently they are now partnering up with Williams. I believe one of the reserve drivers for Williams, if not their like number three driver or whatever's going on over there, is kind of already a Gulf Oil. He, they already sponsor him type thing. So apparently Williams have agreed to this deal with Gulf Oil. So pretty cool stuff. Hopefully a sign of things to come in terms of the good side for money and, you know, progress for Williams. I don't know. Been a tough couple of seasons. They've now obviously got uh, James Voles in charge as team principal. A remarkable update that we saw over the last 24 hours. But some big updates on that story from the Mercedes front because it was confirmed. Well, first of all, George Russell says, James, it's George. Bit of a, you know, pun on the whole um, Valtteri, it's James thing. Discussing um, how long he's been there and all this type of stuff. Hamilton even says here, I'm so proud and grateful for the years that he's worked with James the past decade, won I guess 15 titles between them, constructors, drivers, 80 races, had a great time. Couldn't be happier for him, he's going to push Williams forward to being more competitive, couldn't be more deserving of this role, wishing you the best going forward, all that type of good stuff. Now, Total Wolf actually said after this confirmation yesterday, it's not going to affect Mercedes internally, which I thought was quite interesting because we heard that James Vol said he only told Total Wolf just after the new year, which um, implies that, oh wow, last minute change for Mercedes, Vold's got the offer. He was like, you know what, I kind of want to go and do this, take a new step in the career. Mercedes were like, okay, yeah, fine, let's make it work and we'll find a replacement for Vold's. Turns out, though, they've been planning for this, which makes me think this has been in the works and also makes me think that Vold's has been kind of, you know, touted by Mercedes internally as maybe the next team principal after Total Wolf, as we discussed yesterday. That was a bit of a theory that I had. That maybe gathers a bit more weight now because Total Wolf says they're very comfortable with the structure at Mercedes. It's not like a big weakness has been created by Vold's leaving and they actually won't be replacing him directly. They go on to say that, um, you know, in a bid to help his career progression, they over the last 24 months or so, certainly last season, moved him away from direct involvement in the strategy calls, handed him fresh responsibilities in areas like young driver program and contracts, which um, obviously are roles where the team principal has also a big role to play. So it's almost like they were preparing him in a way for some sort of team principal role. We saw him a lot in the post-race analytical videos, the break Downs they did on the Mercedes YouTube channel, but um, nonetheless, he wasn't at so many races this past year and was doing some responsibilities that the team principal maybe would normally do. Now, um, these changes meant the strategy team at races was being run without Vols, and therefore losing him isn't going to make a massive difference to their future in terms of, you know, replacing him directly in that role. And he says, there's no gap left behind. Many years already succession planning in this area. We have an extremely talented team of strategists, nine people, some very senior. They're not always on the front line. Some have grown within the organization. They've flown the airline alone for the last six months and before that under James's supervision. So um, it's very clear that Mercedes were preparing for this and either the Williams kind of offer was relatively last minute or Mercedes had planned something like this. But regardless of the circumstances, it's quite clear that Mercedes has been preparing him for some sort of TP role, which um, does add to the theory that when Total Wolf moves on, potentially he can step into those shoes in the future. And, um, you know, Total Wolf with some further comment on the matter here. So that is that situation to discussed and put to bed for now. Let's talk about the Lewis Hamilton piece of the Mercedes puzzle though going forward because obviously he's staying around until, well, the, the end of 2023. His deal runs out after 2023, as do the majority, about half the drivers on the grid. I think their contracts run out after this season. So big times for Hamilton to decide whether he's going to continue long term. How many more years is he going to stay around? We know Alonso signed at least, I think, a two-year deal at Aston Martin. It might even be a three-year deal. So, um, 
Alonso's already, what, three, four years old, I think three years older than Hamilton. So, um, you know, kind of, I'm sure Hamilton looks at Alonso, sees the level he's driving at and thinks, you know what, I've still got, if he wants to, which Hamilton clearly does, to try and get back to the top of the sport, win his eighth title, this type of stuff, compete for longer. So he's obviously willing to do that. And he actually said not long ago, he does intend to compete for a multi-year deal with Mercedes. Now, the question is, what are they going to confirm? Is it going to be a one-year extension with Hamilton? Is it going to be a two, three-year extension with Hamilton, which would be quite the statement? If they were able to lock him down for not just 2023, but also 24, 25, maybe even 26, right? That seems a bit of a stretch just because new regulations. I like My guess is Hamilton will either compete until the end of 2025, or he will retire if and when he wins his eighth world title. I think there's got to be some sort of clause in there where, you know, if he wins his eighth, he might call it a day, because I think he's mentioned that in the past that, like, and even recently, that he wants to go out on top, go out as the world champion. I wouldn't be surprised if he does win the eighth, if that's where he just says, you know what, like, I've had enough here and I'm going to be out ski when I win it. Like, um, if, of course, he can do that, if the car complies, and, of course, if his ability stays as it has been the last few seasons. So, Toto Wolf commented on this and said that, obviously, he's been away, he's been in Antarctica doing all this crazy stuff, and when he's back in Europe, which I guess he is now, we're sticking our heads together, wrestling a bit, and then leaving the room with white smoke after a few hours. So, um, yeah, pretty funny, says wrestling a bit over, let's just say, contract terms and the like to ensure that the money's right and all these other factors. But um, he's very confident they can do a good deal. Hamilton's not going to leave and go anywhere else, right? So it's just about finding the contract clauses and all this type of stuff that makes sense for both parties. And um, Hamilton actually commented on this recently and said, I'm not putting a limit on my career, to be honest. I am planning to do a multi-year deal with the team. Really don't know what the next five years holds, but I'm still trying to work on that. A lot of great things that are being put in place. Just launched a film production company, so he's doing a lot. I think there was even some rumors he's going to buy like Manchester United or something. Like um, I know there's been rumors about that before. It probably wasn't going to happen, but maybe he's going to be part of it. I think he even talked about maybe being part of the consortium that was going to buy Chelsea. So Hamilton's doing all sorts of different things. And after he retires, he's going to have a very busy life still. But um, it is his number one focus right now to still be as best as he can at driving a Formula One car. So there's still more things to achieve together. He just doesn't know for how long, but a multi-year deal. That says at least two. My guess is he goes, it extends until the end of 25. Just based on these words, but intrigued to your thoughts on that in the comments section below. And um, yeah, apparently that deal is going to get done very soon indeed. Wolf is confident about it. Hamilton has confirmed his interest to extend his contract beyond this season as well. But I wonder if there's any other clauses in there we might get some insight into when things do get confirmed. Big news then before we close out the video, another trial Formula One are doing. Now, I'm not really sure why this is necessary, but um, I guess they're going to do it anyway. So it's a revised qualifying format at up to two events in 2023. So we don't know when these will take place, but likely at at least two of the 23, potentially 24 Grand Prix, there will be a revised qualifying format where the drivers or the team so will be forced to use hard tyres in Q1, medium tyres in Q2, and soft tyres in Q3. Now I'm guessing the intention here is to try and cut down on the amount of tyres that are being used just because, I mean, it's a bit of a weird one, right? And I can imagine the W13 trying to fire up the hard tyres, they'd have a really hard time doing that. And uh, I'm sure the other teams might be in a similar boat there. So I'm sure it does add some other intrigue just because we know that certain cars go well on the soft or some cars work really well with the medium tyres. Of course, the medium tyre one weekend is not always the medium tyre the next weekend. Just in general, though, some cars work well with certain compounds of tyres and don't with others. So it probably adds a bit more chaos to qualifying if in Q1, one team that should be very good or very bad is really good at firing up those harder tyres and can get great action out of them. Then, you know, we see different results. So just another gimmick, I suppose. But I guess their theory is that it helps to cut down on tyre waste, you can imagine, because in qualifying, obviously, a lot of soft tyres are gone through. They use them for one lap and then might not be used again. So you can kind of understand it. But um, yeah, definitely a weird one they're going to try out. The other thing they're going to try is using enabling DRS, sorry, earlier. So we know that when the race starts, you do two laps. And then on the third lap, that's when a DRS is enabled and um, you can then use it from the onwards in the race. Now, if a safety car happens, of course, DRS is disabled. And then it's again at two laps after the safety car comes in where DRS is then activated and you can use it going forwards. Now, they might bring this forward by one lap. Now, I don't really see too much downside of this. Of course, it does make things a little bit interesting when the field is so bunched up at the beginning. To have DRS immediately would be kind of ridiculous, to be honest. So to have it one lap earlier would be an interesting idea. I think that certainly in sprint races, and um, actually they are going to trial this during each sprint. So I think in sprint races, I kind of like this idea that maybe just after one lap of a race, so onto the second lap, DRS immediately being activated. It's probably a decent thing to try. It's an interesting one because Formula 
one are experimenting with all types of stuff right now, and this being one example, this actually might be a good one, right? Who knows? I mean, they're going to experiment with a lot. Some of it, probably most of it's going to be bad, and maybe a few things are actually good for the sport. So I guess we've got to, um, you know, welcome some experimentation, and at least they're going to try this type of stuff out in sprint races rather than diving straight into it at what could be a very important Grand Prix weekend. Of course, sprint's also very important, but nonetheless, I guess worth a try, you could argue, on that one at least. And just one final thing to mention here on Haas, who has finally officially confirmed that with their new sponsorship with MoneyGram, I believe it is, they are now actually going to be at the cap. Can you believe it? Congratulations to Haas. They will be at the cost cap. They can spend as much as they want to spend. I think Alfa Romeo are in the same boat now. They can finally spend what they want to. And maybe that new golf deal with Williams is going to help them out as well. And now Gunter Steiner says it'll now be about how talented we or you are rather than how much money you've got. So we'll see if Haas actually have the talent to, um, you know, to more maximize the advantage of that extra money they have in their pocket now. So very much in trade to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.